Welcome back to Late Night Football. Today, we're talking about how the Atlanta Falcons win the 2024 NFL Draft. And guys, this video is going to be a little bit slower, more than you used to at least. I'm not going to give some crazy edits in here. It's just a long seven-round mock draft. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe and support the channel because we're brand new to YouTube. And let's not waste any time. Let's get this thing going. Let's switch right over here to my mock draft simulator. We're using PFF today. All right, so here we go. I want to state in the beginning, I'm picking who I want. I'm not doing what I think they would do. It's what I would do to win the draft. Because, of course, I'm right. I'm the smartest guy here and smarter than all the GMs in the NFL. That's why you're watching this video, correct? So from here, the Falcons at eight are in the best position, honestly, than majority of the draft. Because at eight, they're going to get the first defensive player they want, their favorite, and they're going to be seven picks behind the first overall pick. That almost never happens in the NFL, but this year it does. So they're in a fantastic spot, and defense happens to be their need as well. So... They're not trading up. They're going to sit right there and enjoy themselves. Here we are. Let me slow this timer down so we don't jump somewhere I don't want to. But here we are at 8. We pick whoever we want. Let's see how this all fell. Caleb, Daniels, May, Marvin, Neighbors, McCarthy, Odunze. Interesting Odunze. Most of the time it goes Joe Alt right there. I think it'll be Joe Alt on draft day too. But here we are nonetheless. At 8, what do the Falcons want? Whatever they want on defense. They get their, they get their choice. It's beautiful. This is... The best scenario for them, we got Newton, we got Cooper DeGene, we got Quinion Mitchell. That's my guy. I like Quinion a lot. We got Latu, Murphy, and then Dallas Turner has been the very popular pick here. Atlanta fans, I have done my homework. Before recording this, I did a seven-round mock draft, and I saw how the players fell, how the corners fell, because that is a position of need. There are, sometimes, there's a guy I like in the early second round that's not quite where your pick is at, but we're going to make something happen if you know what I'm saying. So here, I'm taking definitely defensive line. Do we go Newton? Do we go Latu, Murphy, or Turner? I'm going to go Turner today. I know it's a very popular pick, and it's vanilla, but it's the right pick in my opinion. He is a fantastic edge rusher, and that is what you need on this defense. We're going to skip ahead a little bit. Watch how this draft board falls. I'm not going to review every single pick because that would be too much, so watch closely. you see who falls. So here we are. We're heading to the beginning of the second round. Now, there is a corner I like a lot. His name, make sure to hit and go, is Mike Sane Ristel. This guy's amazing. He's a great nickelback corner out of the University of Michigan. Kind of hate that school, but he's a great player nonetheless. I got to respect it. So we pick right here. He usually falls right about here. Like you can see all these cornerback needs. They need a cornerback. They need a cornerback. They need a cornerback. I'm not even going to waste my time. I'm trading up to the Patriots because the Patriots model, man, they always want more picks. So Patriots, we want pick 34 overall. What are we going to give them? Ignore what I actually give them. I'm just trying to force the trade, okay? Don't get mad at me, all right? I don't understand I'm the GM today, but this isn't actually what I would trade. I'd make, I would hassle them a little bit, you know what I mean? But I want to force this trade to make it happen. So let's just say we give them like a fourth rounder next year. They don't want it. So let's just say we give them like a fourth rounder next year. Uh, force the trade. We're going to force the trade. Here we are. We're on the clock. 34. Here we are. I want Mike Sanders still, the nickelback corner. He's a stud, and we need him on this defense. Give me Mike Sanders still out of Michigan. He's our new nickelback corner. What What more do you want? We got Dallas off the edge. We got Mike in the slot. We're feeling really good about this draft. Let's fast forward to our next two picks, which are both in the third round. All right, we're in the third round. Pick 74 and 79. You can see at the bottom of our screen, we're basically back to back here. We do have to look at what are these teams between us need as well so we can pick and play the draft board to our advantage. I see a lot of edges. I see a lot of cornerbacks. We already got a cornerback, luckily. He is a slot, not an outside type of guy, but we can still make that happen. So we got options here. Let's look at the overall talent on the board. Sweat, screaming value right there. I love Devondre Sweat. This guy's a stud, Devondre. Excuse my language. Absolute stud. This dude's a monster. He didn't even weigh at the Senior Bowl, I'm sure you all know, because he was like so big that maybe he didn't. I bet he weighed like 380 at the Senior Bowl just because he didn't want to scare teams away from drafting him because when you get too big to a point, certain teams don't want you. So it's a big fella. This guy's pretty good at what he does. I'm surprised he fell away all the way this far in the third round, and that might be my lock. And I like Booker. I like – um. there's one more guy I like here. Let me show you. There's a cornerback that's usually here, Renardo Green. I do like Renardo Green. Maybe we get him at 79. I do not think Sweat makes it. Let's take Sweat here and just really bolster that D-line. How's the next five picks fall? Let's see. Walker, Rattler, like it. Fisher, like it. Corm. Woo! Guys, Atlanta, hire me. I'm the GM of the year. We get Austin Booker and... Wait, wait. I didn't want Booker. I think I want Renardo Green. Do we go Booker? They're both here. Look at me. I'm so good. We can go Booker or we can go Green. 
green. Let's see how big green is, right? Or let's refresh my memory. He's six foot. All right, pretty solid player. Uh, man coverage is his thing, not quite zone. Bigger dude, though, bigger cat. Do we want the corner, or do we want another edge player? Let's go with Renardo Green, just because we just got another D lineman. Let's try to balance this out a little bit, put tools in different positions, make both these rooms better overall. Guys, I have directly addressed their needs. D-line and cornerback have both been easily fulfilled. I'm going to fast forward to our next four picks, which we got on the board. All right, guys, we are in round four. Let's make a quick review on what we've picked so far. First of all, we took Dallas Turner, of course, very vanilla. I know everyone does that, but I, it's the value. I get it. How these cornerbacks fall, I think it's the right move. Uh, San Risto, we traded up for him. Stud of a nickelback right there out of Michigan. And then our next pick was Sweat. And then we got Green, so we got... Two D linemen and two cornerbacks. Hey guys, I'm no uh, mathematician, but look, look, look at that, look at that. D line, cornerback. I'm fulfilling the need. We're getting it done. And drafting is not all about need, of course. But if you have the best overall player on the board and he happens to be what you need, you take that guy. It's just it's simple math. Now here we are in the fourth round. Let's go all the way down to where we are. We got pick nine overall. So now it's safe to say. We fulfilled our need, and you're not going to quite fulfill a need on, with a day three pick. Like, you can try to. You hope he develops into something, but it's not an immediate kind of player majority of the time. You do have rare cases, but we want to develop these guys because we think they're really good talent. We're just shooting for the best player on the board. Here we are. Xavier Thomas, solid guy right there, but who's kind of catching my eye, and this is going to be unpopular. I know we have Kyle Pitts, but he's not quite the full rounded tight end. He's a receiver. He can block, but it's not like he's assigned to a lot of the time. Cade Stover is a screaming talent here at the fourth round, nine pick overall in the fourth. I like him a lot. Not everyone likes him. Uh, this dude can do all. Look, he's a well-rounded tight end. He gets it all done. He played for Ohio State. That means as a Big Ten tight end, you had to block big DNs. He can get it done. I like Cade Stover here. Let's make our 12 personnel just a nightmare to deal with. I like Kate Stover a lot. Let's add some more weapons to this tight end room, and let's go to our next pick, which I'll fast forward to here. All right, guys, we're back on the board. Pick 143. Man, we got a lot of picks in this draft. We got 143, 187, 197. We just got Kate Stover. Love the name, by the way, Kate. Very good parents right there. Now, we're just taking best play overall, right? We're not going to fulfill a need at this position. Let's see what we got on the table. We got Jackson. Solid, solid player right there. I don't love him, but solid player. Will Shipley. We could go Jordan Travis. Uh, a little rich for my blood. We got Kirky there for a couple of years, so let's keep it like that. Makai Wingo. I like Makai Wingo. Mason Smith. Also like Mason Smith. Like, not as a player. The potential Mason Smith has is through the roof. So... I'm leaning to one of these two guys, one of the two Tigers. I like LSU Tigers, man. They pan out well in the NFL usually. Zach Zinter, solid player right there. Here we are. Why am I Why am I rooting? I'm always picking Michigan players. Are they good or something? It's start, starting to feel like it. So, Makai Wingo, a little bit different, right? Shorter arms, shorter legs. He sheds blocks well. That's kind of his go-to thing. But he's not as athletic as I would say a Mason Smith is. Mason, five-star recruit out of high school, okay? Absolute stud. Look at this. 6'6", 315. Good lord. Physically gifted. Never quite put it together. He got hurt. I think he tore his ACL at some point. I'm just guessing here. This is a story I heard. I'm sorry if that's not the case. But he has crazy potential. And coaches, they're full of themselves, right? And I understand this is what I would do, but I trust my coaching staff. And I have you seen the Raheem Morris speech on TikTok? I'll put it right here for like five seconds, just, just so you can listen. The difference in the NFL is the people sitting in these seats. You guys make the difference. You guys change everything. You guys determine winning. Nobody else. Not the outside world at all. The people in these seats. The people in, uh, sitting around this thing, we provide the help. That's what we do. We provide the help. We support at the highest level. And if we not, call us out. The guy is speaking to my soul. I would run through a wall for that man. I'm a big fan of his coaching stuff. So you know he's got a good defensive coaching staff. He's got to get it done. Mason Smith is a prospect that you want to try to mold into something special. Let's roll the dice. We're feeling good on who we got so far in this draft. We have the capital to afford the roll of the dice. This is, a this is a developmental team. We got a good coaching staff. Let's bet on the coaching staff with that pick right here. Let's go to our next pick. All right, guys. 187 is on the clock. We got two picks left, 10 picks from each other. So who's on the board? That's what we're looking at, right? Rodgers, solid. I think we got enough D-linemen, but it can never hurt to get more. Uh, Rodgers, Anthony ain't bad. Uh, Green ain't bad. We're just 
We're swinging at the fence here. We're throwing darts. I'm going to throw my dart at Anthony. I like Anthony a lot at Ole Miss. I don't know a ton about him, but I've heard good things. Let's take the value there. And our last pick of the draft, 197, who do we take? 21st overall in the sixth round, Cody Schrader. We could. I don't really want to, though. Marcus Harris, I was kind of eyeing him. This guy's got some This guy's got some real talent. Bigger dude for sure. I think Steel Chambers, not bad. Cannot lie. Like me some Steel Chambers. I think I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Marcus Harris. I'm feeling good about that. I kind of wanted him at 187. That's okay. We played the draft board right. Now we get them both cuz I'm a great GM. God, give me a job in office. I'm a pro. Look at me. Hire me as a scout or something. So this is our mock draft. Let's go all the way to the end and I'll meet you there. Guys, this is it. This is my full mock draft. This is how it went. Let's go round by round and explain my thought process. So one, Dallas Turner. Boring. I don't care. Great player. We need the help on the edge for sure. Now, Mike Sanders still. He's going to creep up in draft boards. Like a month ago, he was going like, Late second, that's crazy. Great slot cornerback. He's creeping up on draft boards. I've done plenty of seven-round mock drafts for the Falcons. You're welcome. You're very welcome, Atlanta fans. And he goes pretty early in the second. So we traded up to get this guy. We sent a fourth for next year. That's not accurate to what I would do. It's not a bad trade, though. We made it happen. Anyways, we got Mike Sanders still in the nickelback position. Javonjay Sweat in the third. Steel, Sniper, Sweat and Turner. Oh, sorry. Sweat and Turner, we're cooking. Cook him a gas. In the third, we got Renardo Green, a bigger cornerback. Hopefully, he could play outside a little bit of inside. He could do it all. It's just a flexible cornerback to throw in that DB room. And then in the fourth round, I love the talent. They gave me a C here. Let me show you. Look at PFF just mocking me. They gave me a C right here. I don't really care. I love Kate Stover. I think it's a screaming value in the fourth round. And we need a blocking tight end to offset Kyle Pitts because Kyle Pitts, hell of a weapon, right? He can't quite block like Cade Stover can. Cade Stover can do it all. It's a good chess piece for that O coordinator. Next, we got Mason Smith. Five-star athlete potential through the roof. 6'6", 315, athletic freak. Never quite put it together at LSU. It's a risk. But with this many picks and this many solid players on your roster already, let's swing for the fences. Let's take some risk. I like it a lot. Next, we got Anthony. I just like the value at safety right there. And then Harris, the D lineman out of Auburn to wrap this thing up. They gave me a B plus. Not too shabby, guys. What did you think? Let me know in the comments. You can't offend me. I'm good. I, all my picks are right, obviously. I'm the best in the game at this. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like because we're going to make one for every single team in the league, you know? Uh, so if you're sick of it, that's fine. See you later. If you'd like to drop a like and subscribe because there's plenty more on the way. Appreciate you guys so much. Love you very much. Have a great day. Peace. Let's kick off this elite tier in the best way possible. The Heisman himself, Jaden Daniels at LSU. Where do I even start with this guy? Amazing pocket presence, the most beautiful deep ball down the field that you've ever seen. Not to mention speed and agility out the gate. He's elusive as hell and you can't get this man on the ground.